Спорт Бэтском. Уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И спортбетском. Живой азарт и холодный расчет. We are back once again here on Room on Fire. Welcome to the channel. It is brand new and we are very excited to be bringing you this first evening of broadcast of very, very many. There's still a lot to come here on the channel. But for now, we have Hellraisers playing against ESG. Now, best of one, SLTV Star Series Season 10. And it's going to be on Mirage. And I am not alone. Of course, I have some random data with me. What's going on, guys? Well, just... uh. Checking up on some TI results and uh, <laughs> eagerly anticipating the game to start. Oh, yeah. We're not going to lie to you, Anders. We were just talking about how Liquid are out. I'm trying yeah. to make uh, make sense of the uh, of the brackets real quick Liquid during the break. Out. What about Alliance? Come oh, yeah. Alliance are out. Come on. I got, uh, I got I mean... to play my song in a room <laughs> no, full no of more, sweets. No more Rat Dota? I'm going <laughs> to miss No it. more Rat Dota. <laughs> uh, people uh... hate watching Rat Dota. I, I think don't... it's exciting to watch. Yeah, I agree. I think I... it's exciting as hell. All my friends keep saying that it's not, but I, I really do like it. But look, guys, we have no more time to talk about Dota because this is all about the Counter-Strike as it will be on this channel for the future. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and supporting us. We really do appreciate it. Oh, that was some really bad Whoa. voice. What is that? Ben, your mic is messing up, dude. Still doing it? It uh, sounds like it's push to talk. Or like, no, you had a fan going or something. <coughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> Maybe it's Skype. Try and take your Skype settings. You never know what it might be. Skype strikes again! Yeah, it happened, like, there, I think it's gone now. Oh, Doja, can you do this, Doja? 1v2, Doja! <laughs> no, he doesn't do it! They find him in the end. <laughs> all right. All right. Everything's sorted now? Yeah, it's I'm not all good. making noises? Yeah, it's all go, good, though. guys. All right, good. Okay, so look, guys, again, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thanks for tuning in. This is the channel that used to be in TV, but now we've renamed it to Room on Fire. And thank you for joining us very much. Uh, you're watching the SLTV Star Series Season 10. It's Hellraisers versus ESG. Best of one game, and it will be Hellraisers starting off on the terrorist side. So welcome to the show, everyone. Sit back and enjoy yourselves, and hopefully... You know, either win or lose some skins, but still, you know, no matter what you do, you should have some fun. Yeah, this game in particular, two of these teams, ESG, I think, have a real chance of doing some damage here to Hellraisers, even an upset. Like, it's an underdog situation, but Michael Lele already making the statement. He picks off Kuchar at mid. Like, you cannot mess around with Michael Lele. He is on fire right now. Definitely a player to watch. What I really loved about that is that Kucha actually had the Deagle long range as well, so it was pretty manly from uh, from Mikey Lillis to step it up, but it worked out just fine. Grenades now raining in towards the B bomb side, but actually Hellrace is just pouring in here, and it will be Markolov taking down the first player, then Angel with the second one. He's actually picked up a C set 75, and that's now a 3 on 3 with the bomb down. Hell of a shot there from Angel as well through Kitchen. That was a big kill, brought it back to a 3 on 3, and now he's waiting right around short. The flash goes over, but Angel is not blind. He gets one, he gets both. Angel with a double kill on short, cleans it up, and now it's all down to Delpan who's on the site. But it's not looking good. He's caught in the triangle. Yeah, the triangle of doom, right? That was no getting out of that one at all. He was right in the middle of everything, so not at all a good situation there. And a pretty good uh, comeback there from Hellraiser's Vendetta. What do you think? It looked to me like early on ESG had the upper hand. Yeah, definitely great start for ESG getting that entry frag in mid, but some great shots coming out from Angel, I think, is what made the round for Hellraiser's. I know it's pretty cool to see because they did go for a pretty unorthodox buy in that pistol. I think they had two CZ-75s and then a Deagle. Yes. And that's some not something you see every day, but they made it work, even though Kuchar got picked off with the Deegan med, but it's cool to see them uh, trying out new stuff. Yeah, some nice adjustments coming out, and in this round, ESG go for no body armor. They pick up just a bunch of P250s. Pistol of choice, which is, I mean, it gets more and more interesting, because it seems like more and more of the pistols get become viable. You know, it could be the P250, it could be the 5.7, five, it could obviously be the Deagle or the, you know, the CZ-75. There's a pretty big... Uh, you know, number of pistols you can choose from now. That's really interesting, actually, that you point that out. P250s on three of those players, at least. Yeah. So that's, uh, that, yeah, okay, Roke does have the C he does have the C 75 so he hasn't got his soul back quite yet. <laughs> but it seems like the rest of the team are, you know, are starting to gravitate back towards the P250, which is really interesting. Well, as we say that, Emilio picks up a Deagle. Well, I the like Deagle's alright. We're alright yeah. with the Deagle. 
And look at this, Rogue rushing up fairly aggressively in the middle here. Wish they would have had a flashbang to try and, you know, do this kind of push. But again, um, ESG here, not really investing into anything, just the pistols. I think it's I think it's a worthwhile investment. You know, $200 and you throw a flashbang from A over into middle and then you peek. You know, get lucky, you get a few kills in there. Yeah, I think it's definitely worthwhile, especially if you're actually buying up, especially given how they didn't buy armor in the in the first eco round. So they definitely have money to spare, but I guess they want to make sure that they do have the cash needed to equip Delpan or Mikalela with an op. And that's uh, what I'm expecting to see right now. That's well. That's the thing. They aren't quite there because they haven't really got that many kills in. All right, Delpan is going to go for the op. It's not Glass Cannon. He's got Kevlar no helmet. But they didn't do any damage at all to Hellraisers in those two eco rounds. Well, look who's also getting an AWP. It's Markolov. <laughs> He's actually the one guy who's not boot camping, as far as I know. Everybody else in Hellraisers, um, I think, is boot camping with Dreamhack Valencia, um, which I think I can't confirm it yet, but I think we might be covering as well here on the channel. Um, but yeah, Del uh, Markolov picking up one is definitely a switch up. It's you know for anyone who's a you know a 1.6 fan, this will be like uh, sweet music to your ears just watching Markolov with an AWP. But for anyone else who used to you know only been following us. In, in global offensive here, then maybe it's a little bit strange to see. Yeah, Kucher has actually been the one who's been picking up the op more as of late, more so than the Markolov for uh, Hellraisers. And he's definitely showed that he can be a very competent opper as well, but I wouldn't mind seeing Markolov picking up the op again. No doubt. I mean, he's good with it. He's already shown. I mean, he can still op when he needs to, but it's not, it's, it's, we know right now for a fact for the Hellraisers after, I think we interviewed them at uh, Fragbite, that it's really just a feel thing for them. It's like whoever feels like picking up the AWP, a lot like Nip, where it's just like, okay, I, I feel like going with it. Okay, fine. You go, you go for it this round, right? That's, that's kind of how it goes for Hellraisers. So maybe Mark Loppy's he's been, he's been opping. Oh, lately. Look at this comeback. They actually were in a 5 on 3, and now they've turned it back into a 3 on 3. Unless Mikey and Lily can stop them here, this bomb is going to go down, and it will be all of a sudden Hellraiser's claiming back a round that they definitely should not be winning right now. And that's a very important kill coming in there for Michael now. It's going to be down to Hellraiser's Kucha and Markolov left. 2 on 3. Kucha has a chance of getting a double. He's going to walk in. Rogue goes down, and he keeps shooting. No, he can't take down Mikey Lily. The bomb does get planted, but Markolov's alone. He's going to get taken down by Hutton, and that's going to be it. ESG win back the round, and very nicely done. I feel like that could have been even even more smooth on them, but I'm glad they managed to reset at the end there. It probably could have been a bit tad bit smoother. I think Amelia was a bit unfortunate not to to peek out um, Adren coming out of apps there, because that was just a just a matter of centimeters if uh, before you could see even the the barrel of his gun or uh, Adren's arm. So that was really unfortunate, and that kind of led to Hellraiser just getting onto the site and getting that bomb plant. But still works out for the Swedish guys in the end. They do pick up the round, and they manage to hold on to an op. And actually, we see Michael Lele picking up an op as well. Yes, and yeah, that's a pretty mean crossfire here. Delpan and Michael Lele both with an AWP, and then over at the B bomb site, it's Rogue and Katin with a FAMAS and an M4 just you know, holding down here. And so far, again, Hellraiser is starting off losing two players without getting anything in return. So that's not the kind of start they were looking for. What a flick shot from Mike Lele though. Catches Doja jumping by behind Van, just a split second shot, and he gets it. That's three off kills so far this round for ESG. And now Rogue has to step in and ruin the party. Gets one with the Famas, but that's down. It's down to Markolov now, and the bomb is dropped over at B site. So he's still stuck at top mid right now, Markolov. He's nowhere near this bomb. The real question is, you know, can he actually like live through this, or does he want to throw his life away? Yeah, well, he's going to be walking out with his back turned to Kriton, and he's going to be going down. So it's the second round for ESG. Ben, is that your squeaky, squeaky chair I can hear in the background? Mm -hmm. It must be. <laughs> what? I need my squeaky chair, too. I have my squeaky chair, but I'm not sure if you can hear mine just as much. I'm hearing some sort of squeaky chair anyway. Look, uh, you know, that's just a, a completely sidetracked here. <laughs> what, are, what can they do here, Hellraisers? Because it feels like these two AWPs are going to be pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, especially if they can't retain an op of their own. I mean, sure, Markloff's out and about searching for a fag, but he couldn't connect on the shot towards Emilio on the A site earlier in that round. And if they can't really get the opening frags with the off, I think they're going to have a really rough time actually getting any control over the mid area. Yeah, so they say screw the middle, let's go for the A-bomb side and use flash and smoke to try and, you know, get rid of the orbs, push them back, and that's working out right now. If only they would put on a little bit more speed, they need to get this bomb down quick before the actual smokes disappear, otherwise they're of no use at all. And now, well, 
Delpan misses the shot. He's going to go down. A big opening given here to Hellraisers. I think probably the bomb carrier should have died then. So a big mistake coming out from Delpan. It's going to be Hutton left and Rogue. And one is going to go down, leaving Rogue in a one-on-three. And he should definitely run here. I think that round could have turned on a dime if Delpan had gets that shot off before the bomb went down. I, I think you're absolutely right. That was a fortunate uh, string of events for Hellraisers because that should have been pretty easily shut down from ESG's side. Yeah. And instead it ends up being 4-2 to two and they actually survive with quite a few people as well. Oh, as I say that, Adrenaline dies from the bombs. But still, they managed to hold on to an AWP and an AK. That's pretty decent for the kind of buy they went into the round with. Oh man, that's, um, you know, coming off of a two-round victory here for ESG means, well, they can still buy losing that round, but they spent a lot of money doing it. They only have the AWP. If they lose this upcoming round, it's going to get really tricky. And as a result, they're going to go for a bit of a switch up here, putting Delpan on the back in the window and then having Michael a little bit further. But he actually falls back. I thought he was going to push up further. This is, a, this is a very important round for both teams, actually, because their money is all over the place. In both cases, they this is a weird mix buy or an eco. Whoever loses this, but Emilio right up to the smoke. He's gonna get two as well. Doja and Angel both picked off at pit. And now it's Adrian who's managed to sneak his way out onto the side. He finds Michael Lele looking towards apartments. Good punish there from him, but ESG are sitting on the bomb at pit. Yeah, see if they can take care of Emilio here and turn this back into a two on three before Adrian goes down and he, well, it's a little bit too late. Emilio's gonna run away. They can give the bomb to Kutra if they feel like it and just let him run away. And a bit of a pause coming in here. What was really interesting, I think, is that Emilio was actually... Do you see the way he was trying to look for the smoke then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that has happened with the recent updates, not the most recent one, but the one where they tried to fix the smokes. Yes. Uh, and uh, there, was, there was some side effects to that attempted fix. Now you can. Uh, now there, well, there's several sneaky ways they can actually see through smokes, or kinda see through smokes. And uh, yeah, like the best players are gonna take advantage of that. Yeah, we. I mean, Emilio is not the first to do it. We've seen a couple of people do it. I saw it at ESCA LAN as well, and that's just what it is. You know, you can if you look down into the ground, you can sort of at the top of your screen. Just to uh, peek through there. I actually, that wasn't even what got him to kill. But um, still, pretty good job round here from ESG. Kuch is going to be running in 15 seconds as he goes down. And it is a triple kill from Emilio and a third round for um, for ESG. So, I mean, that's Hellraisers now in turn with no bomb plant and no money to buy. Exactly. And, well, I mean, ESG, it's a good thing that so many people lived as well. Because they're going to be able to stretch their money somewhat. Get full equipped again without taking too much of a heavy hit to their economy here. They need a, they need another buffer round. Like a really solid round where they can just shut Hellraisers down and build a little bit of money on their side. Hellraisers sticking to pistols and Delpan already getting the first kill. He even legs Adrian jumping past. So, good start here for the Swedes. Yeah, and Elpan, Delpan, he just, Elpan, Delpan just doesn't care. He's going to get a bunch of kills in the middle. Three before he goes down. He almost killed two more, and it's going to be easy for the rest of his team to clean up here. Uh, uh, Hrith and Amro coming in with a kill each. That equalizes the score, and we are back to 4-4. Four, four. And this is pretty good news. I think one guy from ESG disconnected. He's going to be back, but we've got to remind everyone this is a CT-sided map, so it is on ESG to pick up the majority of the rounds. Now, it's not a CT-sided as Nuke or Train or something like that, but still, you know, I think uh, if they get to, to 9, 6, or 8, 7, it's going to be a pretty, pretty even match here. Yeah, I'd agree with that assessment. It's not overly biased for CTs or overly in favor of the, the CT side, but yeah. Yeah, it, it is it is up there, right? You, you do, you do want to win the majority anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, okay, just to go through what's happened so far, we've seen some pretty good double AWP defense from ESG and Hellrace has managed to break that by going for, you know, the most basic A strategy there is on this map, which is, you know, smoking off two smokes towards the connector of the jungle and then one guy or one smoke towards the CT spawn. Or, yeah, CT spawn. And then you just push in, put the bomb down and take it from there. Do you think that's something that they're going to try and repeat here once we resume the game? I wouldn't be too surprised to see. I mean, obviously, if you find something that's working for you you shouldn't you should never stray away from that uh but we've seen hell racers do a lot of weird stuff in previous I games like the, i like the timing of it really when they when they figured out okay ESG is starting to wise up here a little bit and then when they're on the brink of really running out of money they managed to get three rifles and two pistols i think for that round with the smokes yeah uh, they, they just decide to go for 
basic bread and butter, right? A very cool strat that lets you get out onto the site, and it just happens to go the right way at that time, as you know, you guys were talking about with Delpan not being able to stop the the plant. But that that's a that's a very good strat that I expect Hellraisers to keep using. Yeah. Just because it's so effective. If you can get those smokes down and make it up slope without getting torn to shreds by nades, etc., uh, it's it's very tough to stop for that. It really comes down to what ESG keeping their cool, hanging back, letting the smokes clear, and then going in for the retake. Yeah, and I, I, one other thing that makes that A push even stronger is the fact that they probably recognize, or they definitely recognize, that ESG are doing two ops with Delpen and Michaelella. Mm -hmm. And doing, it's like I said, obviously with these smokes, it's pretty easy for a T side team to get into the bomb site and at least get somewhat control over the bomb or, yeah, bomb spot. The issue for ESG is the fact that they do have two ops, so a retake is going to be a lot harder than what it would have been with just one op. True. And that's definitely in Hellraiser's favor, because normally you'd see teams, when they recognize uh, the various smokes coming in towards the A-bomb site, they just fall back and are full of contempt with actually just going for a retake, because that's what good teams do. They have planned out scenarios for how they're going to play everything. If there's an A retake that's that needs to happen, but I'm not really sure how prepared they can be with two offs because it's going to be really tough to actually get in there. Yeah. I mean, we saw that earlier, and especially if one of them goes down, then all of a sudden you just, I mean, you're going to you're gonna have to rely on Hellraisers to make some pretty big mistakes for it to, to go your way again. Um, I think we're still waiting for uh, Mike Lilly to get back in. So why, while we're doing that, I really want to thank all of you for tuning in. Now, 19,000 people watching this channel. And I got to say, you know, when, when you... When you remake a channel like we did, I, I was a little bit worried that maybe people were going to be like, oh, you know, how can we find the new channel? Where is it going to be at? And all that confusion. I'm glad or you guys... not recognize the name. Exactly. Well, you, know, you know, that's the thing. Yeah, so I am really, really happy so many of you wanted to tune in. I hope you're going to follow the channel and, um, and you know, come back in the future like you've been previously. Uh, in terms of what's going on on the channel, so far, not that much has changed. But already tomorrow, there's going to be uh, stuff coming up. New announcements. Can't tell you what it is yet, but I can just tease you a little bit. And I'm glad you guys wanted to, you know, follow us on this pretty exciting journey. It's going to be m even more crazy in the future, I hope. But uh, for tonight, we've got, uh, yeah, we've just got, uh, got this going on. And we would have had more games as well, but this is going to be the last one of the evening because all the teams, and I'm guessing a pretty large uh, proportion of you guys are going to be watching the World Cup as well. Obviously, Germany playing Argentina, Argentina. right? Yeah. 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 So that's, I uh, thought so. I think, I think Germany are looking pretty good going into this. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Germany has just looked extremely solid all tournament. They play like uh, German machinery, but they also play entertaining football. And previously, if you go back to the early 90s and 80s, they were just a machinery that somehow won games. I think it was Gary Lineker who said, uh, a game versus Germany, Germany is a, 22 men go out on a field to play football. 90 minutes later, Germany was one, like something to that effect. <laughs> because they were, they were just so structured in how they played. And they're the same way, except they're playing really, really fun football. And that's, I, I hope actually they win, win this World Cup. I, th I feel like they deserve it. Well, I feel like I'm a little bit biased because Semler and I got um, got a bit of a taste of uh, of some of that German spirit when we were down in Berlin. That's when they beat Brazil seven to one. We were in <laughs> Berlin at that point, and uh, uh, safe to say things got a little bit out of control as we had already agreed to take a shot and a beer every time. Um, every yeah, time was... there was a goal scored. Yeah. We should have really thought that through. <laughs> just you know. We didn't. No. I don't think any of us expect. Like that's the thing. It's that silly thing where you're just like, ah, there's no way. Like they'll win like two one or something. Like it's exactly. fine. And then of course with it by the end of the first half, it's like five goals for Germany. Yeah. And you realize you're you're about to be very sad for another fifty minutes. <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was it was fantastic. I mean, in the streets of Berlin afterwards, people driving around, fireworks, people hanging out of the taxis, just being super excited and friendly. And it was uh yeah, it was worth it. It was worth it at the end. Oh yeah, we we lucked out being there at that time. That yeah. was really cool. Definitely. Big thanks to everyone who's been subscribing. Just noticed Crusader 1349 uh, subscribing, but I saw a couple of other people earlier. I can't really read out all the subscribers uh, when we're doing it, but really do appreciate it a lot now that we're running our own thing. It helps us even more to keep the channel active and keep you know content on here, which we will be doing. Uh, goal is to cover as much as we can and also maybe to do a little bit more than that even. So we will see. Still waiting. I think actually, where is he? I'm going to check Skype, see what's going on. 
Ah, still waiting for uh, for my calculator to get back online so we can continue with the game here. Yeah, it's it's it might be a little bit. It looks like they're they're going to that's it. ESG are going to go for a sub because I think I think Michael Lele, that's that's it. He's done. He's simply he simply retired for the evening. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got. Peter. He really wanted like, to see the World Cup. <laughs> like he he was already halfway drunk, you know, <laughs> down to his second six pack. He was just good to go, so he just pulled his TP cable and that was it. Exactly, exactly. Just decided no more. I have to get mentally prepared for this. Well, uh, you know, I guess the Swedes got to take any excuse, seeing as how they weren't in this World Cup. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. A, a <laughs> oh. lot of countries weren't. Yeah. There's no shame in that. We we haven't been to a, a championship in quite some time, so. 1992 for Denmark. Never forget, right? Yeah, yeah. that was a pretty sick Danish team, though. <laughs> it really it's also was. the last one that really worked, so you know. Okay. Yeah, at, le at least you've gotten to go to tournaments. We end up getting second in the qualifiers and getting to the playoff stages of the qualifiers, and then playing the the first seed of that said qualifier, and just dreams oh. being crushed everywhere. He's back, apparently. Uh, could it, it like could it be true? Huh. True. The, the, the dream is alive. alive. It's real life. Right. Yeah, his ping seems to have settled. All right. Well, then, in that case, if you're just joining us, then welcome to the channel. You're watching Room on Fire. And, um, yes, we're casting the SLTV Star Series Season 10. I'm Anders with me, Summer and Vendetta, as always. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. We are still in the first half of this game. Best of one. And the score is 4-4 right now with uh, Hellraisers winning the pistol round and then just winning a single round after that, in fact. So if you take that trend into account, guys, I mean, you know... We're talking, we're talking one of the five rounds going in favor of Hellraisers after the initial pistol rounds, you know. How does that yeah. feel? I, I still think uh, Hellraisers are definitely the team to, to, to be feared, I guess, in this game. I think the, they've gotten off to a pretty good start. Uh, obviously, yes, you being on the favorite side, they do have the chance to just shut out Hellraisers completely, but I don't know. Hellraisers are once again going towards the bomb site, and they made it work last time around. Yeah, they did. Emilio goes down this time. Not as much success as last time. Delpan making sure nobody's coming up from the middle. It is a 2 on 3 though, and right now it's still ESG with the advantage, unless they can get just one more kill in here. Dosha, I'd really want him to wait for Markolov and then see if they can time something. Delpan spots one. Not going to be a kill, and then he's going to get smoked off. Is he going to peek out anyway? That could have been dangerous. Dosha still moving up here. Markolov coming in to help out from the apartments. Rogus right at the corner, and Dosha gets spotted. He's going to go down. That leaves Markolov alone in a one-on-three with the bomb out of his control as well, and he's going to go down to Delpan. So there is the round for ESG, and now Hellraisers again without any money, and things not looking too hot at the moment. No blind spray there for Markolov as well. Lucky for him that he couldn't quite get something. But uh, ESG is still... You I mean, Delpan did take a peek, he did take a risk, I guess, just to get the information, but still, the fact that they hung back and actually played to their numbers, that man advantage was so important there. Because if, if, if Delpan actually goes full bore and tries to get a kill or something like that, throws it away, brings it back to a 2-on-2, two -two, Hellraisers are in a good spot, so... ESG keeping it together, even after having that long pause. Yeah, and now Mike Kalili and Delpan and Emilio as well, everybody chiming in to clean up this eco round from Hellraisers. Not even not even an attempt at putting down the bomb, they just got destroyed as they ran in. And that round's over in a second, and then we're on to the 11th round. Yeah. Uh, what I think is pretty cool though, from what Hellraisers are doing uh, with that A push uh, of theirs, is the fact that they're not throwing that many nades really, and Adrena is just more or less walking out of apps instantly. Not really caring about what's surrounding him, and he's done that twice and actually gotten a kill. Yeah, both times. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool way to play it from Hellraisers. Unfortunately for them, both times they've done it as of late. Uh, Emilio have has pushed aggressively towards the A pit, catching some people off guard. So that kind of that little push they get from Adren getting out of apps is uh, negated by Emilio picking up one or two frags in the A pit. Yeah, you're right, but if they do get onto a bomb site with all those grenades still intact, it means once the bomb is down, Hellraisers can really hold on to the bomb site for a long time. So we'll see if that actually happens or not. Pretty good grenade coming out from Mike Lilly landing down towards the underpass, and it's going to take Kucha down pretty low on health now. Hutton is waiting up here. They're going to be boosting in. Kucha should be going down right here. Gets backstabbed, in fact, and Dosha will get the return kill. 
Nice control there by Doja, managing to pick that up with then is caught. Now Delpan looks towards Pit, finds Angel. There's still a man up in A apartments though for Hellraiser, so perhaps he can catch Delpan off guard here, take a peek towards those stairs, and he will do that. It's the duel, back and forth exchange, oh. and the flight from Doja through the smoke catches Delpan on the stairs. And that right there was, uh, was an, you know, the map has actually changed. You can shoot through this wood here. Delpan, he got killed from exactly that. So pretty nice adjustment, realizing already, Doja, that you can actually shoot through that wood panel that's been cr added recently, which is an interesting change. I, I'm not sure I'm even against it. I think it's actually kind of cool. It is very neat. I mean, that, that's options right there. And he knew exactly where Delpan was. He was able to open things up. But unfortunately for Hellraisers, that Emilio will find one more. So it's down to Adrian and Doja now. They have the bomb, at least, and they're trying to sneak their way out onto a site, but there are two members here for ESG, and now Emilio confirms it spots one and gets both. Great play for Emilio. Emilio. What a round. Yeah, Emilio has really been instrumental in a lot of these rounds that ESG has picked up. I think he's gotten... or well, right there, he got two frags, but in the round towards A, where uh, Hellraiser has really tried to get onto that A bomb site, he's been shutting them down early on, and I think that's been key. For ESG, especially since they have played with two ops, which I previously mentioned, that would make a retake harder. So Emilio getting those early frags in is really big for ESG. Yeah, it is. Now we have a, a little bit of a post coming up. Actually, just on post as I said that. But things are looking good right for ESG. They've managed to, to regain control of the match. And as we said now, after the first three rounds, which followed from the pistol round, it's actually been just one out of seven now that has gone in favor of Hellraiser. So we'll see if they can manage to get back. They don't need that many rounds here. If they can get one or two more, I think they're going to be able to have a pretty good second half. But they, they need to get more than four, I think, in the first half. Yeah, I think I agree. Five or six. Yeah. That's something they could be uh, comfortable with. And I'm not really sure if he caught it early on, but Emilo actually needed himself in, in CT spawn. I'm not really sure what that was about, but Maybe he's, he's feeling down. sorry. <laughs> well, hell raises. He's thinking, trying to play with a handicap. Yeah, they need they need something going their way, but and this round is definitely it. Rogue goes down as well. We're looking so far at a flawless round, and just Dilpan left here with an AWP in hand. They do have money to rebuy, especially because Rogue somehow has fifteen thousand dollars on his hands, but. You know, still a good start here for Hellraisers to uh, to what might be a bit of a comeback. That's very solid. Delpan spots the man on a side as well. He's just trying to hang in here and do as much damage as he can. He gets another kill. Delpan with the flash as well. That was just blind, but he barely makes it around the corner to stay alive. So no. now they've got him boxed in. Delpan isn't going anywhere. There it is. They, they take care of him. And it shows you a little bit of what Delpan can do. Just not afraid at all, even in that 105. And two kills like that can make a difference. I mean, if Hellraisers lose the upcoming round, they're going to need the rifles that they just lost. And I guess another... That's my killer there again disconnecting, unfortunately. 7-5 to five is what we're looking at. And let's see how, how we're going to progress once we're back. Again, we do apologize for all these delays, guys. But it is ultimately out of our control. But what do you guys think about this map change? I mean, the, the one change is, is, you know, the fact that there's only, like, one wooden window over here by the B-bomb side, and the other one is is the big one, I guess, is, the, is this wood panel. Then they also changed the way this is blocked off. It's less blocked now between the window room and the and the whole house, as we sometimes call it. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think uh, the the bigger change out of all, all the ones they made is obviously uh, the wooden panel and yeah. the CT connector. Which could play out, uh, well, I guess we have to see, it could play out to be really well, or a really good thing for uh, for the T's, or it could just be just a nifty thing. I don't really think it's going to do too much for the CT's, I just think that it's going to be more of a worry for them. Especially if you're playing, uh, well, if you're holding apps from the connector area, like by jungle or by the connector. Hmm. Uh, other than that, I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact uh but I, i'd rather see them sort out the 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 various wall banging issues on this map i'm not really sure there's been a ton of threads on on the csgo subreddit about it how same like the same materials have different uh penetration values mm -hmm. so you can span through some places on the left side of a, of a door but not the right side those type of things so i'd, I'd like to see them do like sort of those type of things before they add more stuff or change more stuff about the map. Oh, a start has been given. Markolov and a leg shot as well with the AWP. We saw him pick it up earlier and he didn't really do that much with it. But this time he is getting on the way. We have the game resumed. So we'll see if this is going to be around for Hellraisers. Hurton getting flashed and he's down to 13. Look how low they all are. 
and now they start to fall. Emilio is next. Delpan waiting inside. He misses the shot, and there's no time for that. They're all coming for him. There's only four people, and well, four people coming. He's alone in the bomb side. He's gonna go down, and now Rogue is left, and they are running out of money here. Two other people have, but the rest really don't have that much to buy on here. So this is a dangerous path they're heading down right now, ESG. Yeah, especially since Hellraisers are on the brink of picking up that sixth round, and that's what we're talking about. They needed to get five to six rounds to start feeling comfortable on their T half, Hellraisers. And they're about to do that, if not better, because there's still a couple rounds left in this half for Hellraisers to do damage. And with ESG in such a weird state economically, it's not looking good for the Swedes. They've also just lost, I mean, the, the thing is, Mike Alele getting caught out in this game and is no longer, you know, he's no longer in this match. He's a he's a heavy hitter for ESG. He's he's one of the two guys that really does a lot of the heavy lifting for the team. Delpan is the other. So PETA, he, he, ha he has some pretty big shoes to fill right now. He has to make a difference. Yeah, PETA recently retired, right? So... Yep, working at a bank. Yeah, but obviously, you know, just retirement won't won't make you lose all the skills you have, and Peter has a lot of them. So we'll see if it's uh, if it's going to come back. Maybe he'll just come back to playing again for because he, you know, he loves it so much. Please, well, you never you never really retire from Counter Strike. It's do true. You? We've got just you figured out already, Peter. We've got you figured out. <laughs> this time they pick up the first kill on Angel, and Del Pandas drop down to 18 health. But and finally a good turnaround here for ESG. Now they just need to win the last two rounds and make this nine six and they will be in a decent position. Right now, I, I, well, look at Emilio right now. He's pushing into A apartments. I love this from ESG. This is something we saw LGB do all the time on Mirage. But hold that thought. It's going to be a B push here coming out for Hellraisers. They get the entry, but Huiten is still alive by Bench. He manages to sneak his way onto the side as well, but Adrian point blank oh. gets two kills on him and Peta both. And not looking too hot right now, Emilio in a one-on-three, and they've relied on him to do a lot, but this time it won't happen, it's Markolov with one op shot, one deagle shot. Seems like it really is back to basics for Markolov, right? I mean, AWP and deagle, it doesn't get very much more Counter-Strike than that, I think. 7-7 seven, seven is the scoreline, we're moving into the 15th round, and ESG without much money to buy at the moment, which is unfortunate. Uh, we can see Delpan taking use of that price reduction to the scout, so he's got that picked up, but he doesn't buy armor, even though he's got... I opt to go for a nade and uh, a pistol instead. Emilio gets taken down and oh, there's Delpan with the scout shot. Goes for a second one, but it will be Peter helping him out with the FAMAS. Up close, a pretty good combo. Delpan jumping again. Not going to connect with a shot and he's going to go down in the end. Krithen dies and it is Hellraisers who come up with the majority of the round. 8-7 here for the first half after some unfortunate uh, turn of events here for ESG. That's what it's down to. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that Michael Lilla had some issues with his internet connection, but that that happens from time to time. It's not like PETA is is a bad sub by any means, but it's definitely gonna mess up their team dynamic. And so uh, switching over to the T side. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. CT side, it's like you can kind of go back to the basics, I guess, and just be like, okay, we're gonna hold this way, guys, right? Bread and butter. But T side is, I mean, T side, unless you're hitting those shots, bread and butter. You need you need to throw a little spice in there, right? And that's where. Having your roster, having Michael Lele playing here would make the difference, maybe, for ESG. Yeah, I can definitely definitely agree with that. I mean, they need everything to work out just right at the moment. They're one round down. They need to start off by winning the pistol round here and then just keep trucking on from there. Again, if you're just joining us, then welcome to Room on Fire. If you're just joining us, then this is the first time we're live with the channel and we're super excited. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully we can bring you a lot more cool Counter-Strike content here on the channel. We have a lot of big goals and big plans and everything, but we can't reveal all of them just yet. Tomorrow, though, is going to be a new day and we'll see what goes on. I'm Anders with me, Semler and Vendetta, and let's get it on here. What do you think, Semler? Kucher in the middle waiting with a P2000 of all weapons. P2000, get that headshot. He's, getting, he's looking for that information and they're already doing quite a bit of damage to him as well. He's dropping low, but he's given his... I mean, he's doing a decent a bit of damage to the guys at top mid there for ESG. Oh, look at over here, Docious waiting. Two people. Is he going to walk out? He hears the grenades. He's just waiting. He goes for the first one. There's one second, and he's running out of bullets. And Dosha, he should be gone, and he is gone. And Molotov's going to come up. They're running through. That's not wise. Oh, no. Rogue goes down, and Krithen is going to be alone in a one-on-four. I don't know what possessed them to run through the fire, but you definitely should not. Unless, oh. you know, the room is on fire, then you can sort of... That then you nade, can it out. though. That nade did 85 damage in one. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a bit of a chaotic situation. But actually, some very cool, aggressive play from Hellraisers. I love that position from Doja. 
Yeah, it, it actually played really well with... It seems like that was the initial idea all the way. Doja playing up so aggressively that... It might lead ESG to think that if they manage to pick him off, then that's an opening for the B-bomb site, and instead you have Doja kind of playing the the role as the bait for Angel's Molly. So that was pretty cool to see, and it worked out pretty well for uh, Hellraisers. This time, it's ESG's turn to charge in, but a good grenade from Doja takes down one, then for Master to pick up another one. He's actually going to throw it away and just pull out the pistol. He didn't even want to touch that rifle anymore after uh, missing some of those shots, and it will be around for Hellraisers anyway. They do pick it up, but ESG got some good kills, and if only they could have got the bomb down, it would have been so much better. That would have meant they could have actually bought in this round. Instead, now they are forced to eco once more, and the score is already 10-7. Look at Mark a lot with the, the P90 Asimov as well. Hey. Bart, Poor shame, Mark Mark has Mark. so many skins, it's ridiculous. I'm actually jealous. <laughs> oh, well, this is a slaughter right now for, um, well, Hellraisers. Is Kuchu even taking his time about that. He was really wanting to land that headshot on Peter. I think Markolov might be one of the guys who has the most skins in the game right now. I think there is... If there was a contender at, like, a, a pro level, it'd probably be Weber, right? Oh, man, that's Does anyone tough. know how many skins Weber has? I don't know, but I have a, I have a sneaky suspicion it is a scary amount. <laughs> well, they do. Uh, I mean, people get into skins. I mean, those are collectibles. People put in work to get more skins, which is a good thing, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah, fun all the time. <laughs> it is fun. I do. I do think it's fun. But look at this now, it's the first time, and actually Hellraiser's Markolov, look at where he's holding, right where Emilia was, except he has a P90, so if they come charging through, he's got 50 bullets to try and get something done. There's the first one through, Emilio hiding in the corner, Markolov takes him down, and now more people coming through, he can't see a thing, and actually he's gonna go down, this is working out really well for ESG at the moment. Uh, so far, this has actually panned out great. Kutcher is going to try and put some spray through, catch them as they're making their way to the site, it's not going to be good enough though. The nade, however, does manage to do some pretty decent damage on that A site, but... Wait, then looking towards CT, catches Adrian, and now it's down to a four on two situation. Hellraisers, they're boxed into CPL in mid. They're not really going to be able to get in here and do this. They have to start thinking about how to save. Yeah, I agree, especially because Dosha took a very long time sneaking all the way up behind and all the way up to the top of middle. And that time is something they should have, you know, they could have used that time to try and get some pickoffs, maybe see if they could reduce it to a, you know, two on three or something like that. But now it's definitely too late and they will run away. Oh, but that, I mean, a lot of that round, I think, hinged on the idea that Markolov could have pretty picked up a double or maybe a triple kill with, with that P90 in the position he was in. But it doesn't work out that way, and ESG are there right back in it. I, I actually think Markolov did, did his job. Got the first frag uh, on Emilio, and after he picks up that frag, the jig is kind of up. Everyone knows where he is, and it's a very limited space he can hide in and try to dodge bullets. So I think it was more up to Angel not getting picked off instantly by Deltan. Hmm. I think that definitely would have done done more for them because it, you, it's a limited amount you can do with a with a P90 in that kind of situation, unless they just come bomb rushing into you. Oh, look at that! Now Delpen actually caught in the corner. He's taking a lot of damage. He's still gonna get the kill. They are not taking him down now. Grenade to follow. Delpan is going to get exploded. So that's a pretty good return grenade. And Dosha once again aggressive up here. They're going to be charging right through. He jumps on top of him. That's definitely bad mannered. And Dosha is going to punish them. Takes down Kuthan as his next target. And now it's Emilio and Peter. Two on three here. And the bomb is dropped off in the apartments. What a play by Doja, so sick, but now it's, yeah, this is it. Bomb is up in apartments and Doja is sitting on it. They'd still manage to find Emilio as well. And the last man picked off by Markolov in kitchen. He ESG. actually landed on him. Rogue actually cool. jumped on Doja. I thought for a second there that it would just be, you know, Doja, he's he's going to get caught immediately. You know, it's just the face stop, the curve stop. But I was wondering Doja if they were going to go for something really, you know, he was trying to actually mount him and ride him into the bomb site. You know, <laughs> maybe, you know, next <laughs> level play like that. Pretty spectacular. Piggyback riding your enemy into the bomb site and then winning. The riding crop. All right, well, that means actually ESG without a bomb plant that round, they just can't afford to buy. It's 12-8, Doja takes the first kill, and this is not looking good. They do have one smoke on Peter, so they might try and see if they can put the bomb down. He's already put it thrown into the side. Yeah, and that's definitely a smoke that's meant for a bomb plant, but I don't think they can make this work. Oh, this is going to be tough. They're stuck in pit still. Everyone from Hellraisers knows they're coming. And yeah. Nice shots there by Adrian, though. That was cool, calm, and collected, just one-tapping them down. Yep. 
8-13, and it's going to be another buy round for ESG, but I'm starting to get a little bit worried for the Swedish team here. Agreed. Yeah, they, yeah, they need to pick up a round now, because if they lose this one round, it's back to Eco. All of a sudden, Hellraiser's at 15 rounds, and uh, I think it's all but over from there. Or, or it's just over from there. Look at this Look at this Pretty jump much. from Kucha. Look how quickly he's up into the apartments. Actually, he's not going to get a shot just yet. Rogue is waiting right at the edge. But the fact that he went up on the box and then jumped up instead of going for the for the ladder means he's there much quicker and he will pick off Rogue. And this is kind of Kucha's style of orping that we've seen on Inferno as well. He's not, the, you know, the, the mad flick shot orper, but he's just very cool just sitting one angle and holding it very well. You know, it's that patience, that's the patience there. Defensive sort of opera really just kind of waits for you to walk into the crosshairs. Doran would would have a field day with this. But for now, at least, it is going to be Markolov holding double spray, pushing all the way up to A-Pit. He's going to manage to actually stop the bomb in his tracks. Peter finally comes through and gets a good shot there. Now it's a one-on-one. How, one -on -one. in the blink of an eye, did they go two kills for Peter and two kills for Delpan? I have no idea. The, the the sad thing is that the b bomb is being controlled by Kucha and Delpan also has one HP. And he's going to take a giant trek all the way around the map and this and just hope that Kucha won't realize he's coming from behind. I mean, what do you think of, and at this point, where, do Kucha, where does Kucha actually position himself to, to play this really well? Well, I think actually, as awkward as his current position is, I think this is a pretty good, good choice. He limits as many options, really, for Delpan as possible, and... Uh, and I think a lot of it's going to come down to whether or not Delvin decides to pick up the bomb or not before he goes searching for uh, Kuchu. He's basically right underneath him at this point, and there's only eight seconds left. Bomb gets picked off, Kucha still waiting, and he goes for the kill, and we'll get it, of course, just one HP triple for Kucha. A little bit of an uncomfortable situation for Delpan, and, you know, I guess that was actually a, a decent angle. I was really scared, but, I mean, it's, it's 90 degrees here. You can't really see much of anything. You're going to have to... You're going to have to basically... Just guess that he's there if you want to go for that one. Yeah, it, it's a pretty awkward situation 9 out of 10 times, but given the situation, it actually worked out pretty nicely. Because he didn't want to get go too far away from the bomb. He, uh, he would would like to have the opportunity to punish Delpan the second he picks up the bomb, so really well played by Kucher. Oh, Angel still fighting in the middle. There was a great early deagle shot coming out from Delpan. I think he actually wanted to go for a second one, but his teammates all sat down in front of him and more or less blocked his shot. I'm not sure if he would have got that kill on Angel. Either way, it's back into a 2 on 3 and still looking pretty good for Hellraisers. They're about to be on match and map point unless they throw this 2 on 2 away. That was actually Markloff getting caught by Hoyt then, camping below window there. Don't think Markloff expected that at all. He didn't seem like he was reacting in time. But what's, <laughs> what's interesting is look at Adrian's position right now. Yeah, the entire A bomb site is open. Yep, it is. But Emilio and Hoyt can't really know that, so they're still sneaking their way forwards. As if there was someone in here, and that's what they should do, of course, checking every angle. I think Dosha spotted them now, so he knows that... No, does he? They should know. Adrian is really out of position, and so is Dosha right now. Are they, they have to know what this is a... Well, now they definitely know after the bomb goes down. But this is something that never should happen if you're Hellraisers. You should not be allowing a, an egoing team to get the bomb plant like that. No, you're right. They have... Actually, no grenades on Hellraisers. They're going to have to go for it straight away. Instant headshot here. And Doja's down to 9 HP. Adrian's going to have to come and help out. He will and takes down one. Kurtan repeats and no, he doesn't get the kill. Adrian will take him down. That looked so close. That was actually very smart play from ESG hiding both members down there. Because once you kill the first guy, I think instinctively you just think, okay, the next guy must be hiding in a different spot. Let's look for him. And they thought it was apartments, I think. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. You could see... Uh Adrian That's kind of just looking everywhere <laughs> at that point. Uh, unfortunately, from PSG, they weren't able to take him down instantly. If they do that, I think they win the round because Doja was down to 9 HP at that point. And also, they had they, they actually managed to get a pretty good plant for that, or an excellent plant, given their after point position. So, a bit unfortunate from the Swedes. Now it's definitely falling apart here. 15 to 8, and already two kills happening for Hellraisers. Peter, Quitten, and Rogue are left, and they're going to have to try and see if they can fight for overtime or draw. I can never remember if it's overtime or draw in this league. Not in Star Series, no. Yeah, it's regular league play, so draw is the name of the game. Yep. All right, so they're going to have to fight for the draw here. Peter coming up from underpass. Kucha already watching. Adrian takes down Rogue, and we're back into a two on five. And the Swedes, it's just not their day here. Some connection issues, and then Quitten left alone. 
And he's going to go down to Markolov. Gets the last kill of the match and ends up still at the bottom of the scoreboard. But a pretty good match overall from Hellraisers. And ESG, they're going to have to try their luck next time. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for tonight. Samurai and Vendetta, what do you think? Is there anything uh, else we need to say about that match? Well, just have to point out that it's really unfortunate that Michael Lola had connection issues because I think with the way ESG has been playing the, re uh, well, the last couple of weeks, they're definitely a team that could potentially beat Hellraisers. Uh, so I think, yeah, Michael Lola basically not being able to play messed up a uh, lot. Yeah. I That's agree. pretty much it. It's just we can't take anything away from this match because unfortunately we lost uh, we lost one of the players halfway through. And I, I exactly. think that really 